Hello, this is Beverly from scrapandthread.blogspot.com. Today I wanted to show you a comparison of different types of albums and give you some pointers and tips for using them for traditional scrapbooking and also for other ways to use your albums. There is a variety of different kinds of bindings for scrapbook albums. This first one happens to be a spiral bound album and the page protectors that are already preloaded into this album come punched for that spiral. It doesn't grow uh, with you. It, it's a very finite type album because you uh, can only put in as uh, many um, layouts as there are page protectors for the album. One of the benefits to this type of album is that you don't need to worry about overloading it. It's already been predetermined how many pages will fit in there, and so it's a, a very durable album. This is a great type of album for themes or if you have an event specific uh, type album you want to do, it's nice because of that. Now the spirals in here can be pulled open um, and you could replace or increase the number of pages that you have in there if you could find those page protectors. I personally have not seen them and I'm not sure that I would want to um, pull on that binding because it will change the way that um, that it goes back together once you try to bend it back together again. So I kind of think of these as one-time use type albums, which is a great thing um, because then you, you finish your album and you're done. Uh, this is another one along those same kind of lines. This is a three ring binder type album uh, that comes with page protectors for that particular size. And uh, once you're done with it, you're, you're pretty much your project is done. The nice thing about this kind of album is that you don't need to worry about trying to expand the spine. It is a specific size and that's the size it will always be and you, um, you know, once you know you've got it filled, it's filled. The three ring binder albums or D ring binder albums are becoming more and more popular and I have found that there's a variety of uses for them. But there can also be some drawbacks to this type of album. They're not as sturdy as the postbound albums. Uh, this happens to be the back cover of a Project Life album, and I'll explain why I just have the back cover here. I purchased it and had it sitting on the desk there, and while it was sitting there, it wasn't being used at all. It was just sitting like this album is now. And um, the side of the spine started to tear. It wasn't loaded. There was nothing on it. Um, and it just ripped. And so uh, it had already passed the time that I could return it. And um, so I was kind of disappointed in the fact that it didn't hold up very well at all. So me being the pack rat kind of person that I am, I cut off the front part and the spine part of the album and I will end up using this. Um, I'll cover the top part and I'll use it as a display in an easel or something um, and uh, figure something out to do with it. But it was $20 and, and I, it made me remember that these albums are not very durable, really. And uh, so I wouldn't be able to put a lot of bulk in there. And so uh, I guess it was kind of a learning lesson from that, that perspective. So if you think about what it is that you would be using your albums for, then uh, you can kind of gear your pages and, and how heavy they are to that kind of uh, whatever kind of album it is that you've purchased. Um, the covers on these, it looks like it has a uh, very heavy cardboard and I think a, a MDF or something, a thin piece of that might be in there as well. And so it's not as sturdy as some of the postbound albums. Um, the covers aren't as, as thick, uh, but there is a use for this kind of album and I'm gonna show you some of the things that I do with them. One of my favorite things to do with them is to uh, use them for storage. So this is an album I got at Michael's and I, I've started to decorate the back cover and I haven't gotten very far. This piece of paper is a die cut uh, negative space. It's the piece that you would throw away after you take your die cuts out. And I use that as a stencil for sponging or misting. Um, and I save the uh, the papers from my Cricut and from the Cameo, uh, the Silhouette Cameo to um, make other, make into stencils. And this is where I store them at. So this works out really well for me. I can sort of corral some of my 
die cut um, negative spaces and any of the stencils that I purchase all in one place. And you can get the page protectors with the four pockets for the small ones. I put some cardstock behind the larger ones just because um, it makes it easier to see. I didn't clean that one off very well. Um, anyway, so these this is a, a good way for me to store some stuff in a kind of consolidated area that I can pull out and look at. I do like the, the D-ring binders because there's room for growth. And um, and because it's not used heavily, I think it'll hold up OK. Plus, it was probably half price at Michael's, so um, I maybe paid $10 for that. I, I'm not sure. I do make sure that all of my albums are acid free, even if I am using them for something other than scrapbooking, just because um, it helps uh, to know that I could interchange them. This happens to be a linen album that I got from Stampin' Up. They don't make them any longer, um, and I'm using it right now as an album. But uh, as you'll see, I'm going to have to take uh, the pages out and put them in a regular album. I assumed that since it was a nice big album, it would be able to support the weight of lots of pages. And they all fit in there. That wasn't the issue. What happens, though, is that as it stands up, the weight of the pages um, kind of goes down. I'm not sure if you can see it, actually, but they kind of bend down at the bottom, and then they're starting to kind of curve under. And um, it's OK for like a holding album, um, and I but I will have to take everything out of there and put it into something else because it's not holding up very well. I should say the album is holding up well. The pages are starting to bend. Uh, but this is a, a fairly sturdy album. It just really can't accommodate the number of pages that I have in there. And um, so one of the things to think about if you are storing your, your pages in this kind of album is to make sure that there's enough room for the page to be in there, as long as you have a page protector that's large and uh, big enough to accommodate your bulky pages. Or if you use digital prints, then you can, um, digital scrapbooking, you can put lots of pages in there and use it as a holding album until you move it to something else. Um, but in the meantime, my layouts are protected. Uh, they are, um, as long as I'm not squishing them in there, and, and there is still a little bit of room for growth, so they're not being squished, they'll be okay until I can move them to another album. Um, and I have different companies' page protectors in there. Um, this, uh, These are close to my heart page protectors, but there's also some Stampin' Up! page protectors, and I think there's probably another company in there also. So on here, one of the reasons I liked this idea was that it does allow for growth, but one of the things I don't care about care for is the gap in between the pages. It does lay flat. Um, most albums do lay flat, but um, the gap in between is, uh, it doesn't really work for me aesthetically for a scrapbook, um, for a long-term scrapbook. So that would be another one that I would use temporarily. This um, happens to be a close to my heart holding album or work in progress album. It comes in a protective case. It's a very sturdy cardboard box on the outside, which does lend to some good stability. Uh, however, I'm not using this as a work in progress album or as an album for my scrapbooking. I'm using it to catalog some of my uh, acrylic stamps. I really like the large format of a 12 by 12 album uh, to do this because I can put a lot of information in there and it still takes up uh, the same amount of shelf space for me. Um, obviously it's a little taller, but it's um, it's not a lot taller, so it fits on my shelf and uh, and it's been it's worked out pretty well for this particular purpose or for and you can use it for cataloging other supplies that you might have. I color coded my table of contents by, and it's all done by theme. And then I've stamped um, acrylic stamps on the corresponding colors. And there is a lot of room for growth in this album. I'm not done with uh, cataloging the stamps, but um, but there is a lot of room still to to grow um, to put the other ones in there. As I remove some of my pages from some of the work in progress type three ring binders, I will probably use those albums for more cataloging of supplies. I have most of my catalogs um, in regular office supply type notebooks, the regular eight and a half by 11. 
this album is used uh, as it was intended. It's a work in progress album. I bought it for that purpose and um, it's one of the few things that I'm using the way that it actually was intended. Um, this is a regular three ring binder that Close to My Heart put out and then now they do the D ring. And in here I have kitted pages that are um, either I'm waiting for something, either pictures to add to uh, what I'm going to be doing for layouts or embellishments or I haven't quite decided on layout designs yet. Uh, and so I have those in the album along with um, layouts that I've started and started to adhere things down and for whatever reason have stopped. I, I don't know. Um, there's a variety of reasons why we do that. But um, so this is a work in progress album and it keeps everything safe and together and protected until I'm ready to work on those things. And I really love that idea, uh, but it isn't a good long term solution for layouts that are already done um, for me because I just I don't prefer that kind of uh, album for my long term storage. And it's all personal preference. Everybody has their own ideas behind what works for them. And these are some of the things to consider. When you're looking to purchase albums, there's a lot of things that you personally need to kind of decide about. Uh, is cleanability important to you? Um, what is the album going to be used for? Are you giving it away as a gift? Do you want a one-time use type album? Do you want a linen album? Um, this one here is linen and you can see that it does get dirty. So if I was going to give it away to a, a family with lots of little busy sticky hands, then maybe a linen album isn't the best uh, idea, um, or at least not a light colored one. So there's a lot of things to consider when you're looking for uh, albums and obviously cost is a concern, um, durability, uh, and use. Those are kind of the main things for me. Whether or not I can expand it is big on for some kinds of scrapbooking and sometimes I want single use type albums. So it just sort of depends on your needs. So we've looked at single use albums and three ring or D ring binder albums. I'm going to show you two other uh, very popular styles of albums. And to me, these are the ones that are a little bit more archival um, just in how durable they are. This is a Creative Memories strap hinge uh, or strap bound album. It's uh, they are no longer available. However, there are some companies that do make this kind of binding, and they are available through the big box stores. I don't know what the quality is of the ones that are in those stores because I, I haven't purchased any. Creative Memories is a very high quality album. Their binding is such that it's um, put together through these little metal staple like things that are on the edges of the pages. The straps are woven through those little uh, staples and the page protectors slide over the actual pages. From what I understand, some people build their pages on those actual page, the white pages, or I think they have black ones too, um, and other people would do a page and then adhere it to that and then stick the page protector on there. Uh, everybody stamps and or excuse me, everybody scrapbooks a little bit differently and so it's just a matter of personal preference. These are lovely albums. Um, they're high quality. They lay flat. There isn't a huge gap in between the two pages um, but there's a, a little bit of a gap in there and you can sort of see where that that strap goes in there. And um, some friends of mine on Facebook say set, told me that they do 30 to 45 pages in an album. I didn't ask them if they were flat scrappers or if they do bulky scrapping like I do, um, in which case that may impact how many pages you could actually fit in there uh, easily and um, what kind of weight that those albums could accommodate. Obviously in a smaller album like this, you can probably put more pages and not have to worry about the bulk and the weight as much as you would in a larger album and uh, worry about whether or not the spine would hold up to that kind of weight and wear and tear. So these are all things to kind of consider when you're designing your albums and figuring out how many pages you want to put in there because cardstock is very heavy and it will impact um, what you can put in there and how much um, how much uh, wear and tear basically you're going to be having on your albums. 
another thing to consider is who's going to be looking at your albums. If it's children, you probably don't want it to be too big and bulky uh, because it gets to be heavy for them and they can't enjoy the album as much. This album can expand. Uh, my Creative Memories consultant put it together, so uh, the pages are all in there already and I'll have to figure out how to put it together if I need to expand it. These are lovely heavy duty albums. However, they were a little pricey when they were available and now that they're no longer available, um, people are needing to find alternatives. So part of the reason why I'm showing you things that are no longer available is also sort of as a cautionary tale. This album happens to be put out by Stampin' Up! also and it's a very heavy duty post bound album and I really like the quality of it. It was very thick, uh, the covers were thick, um, and I knew that it, I could expand it if I needed to because it was post bound. So when you find something you like, I recommend purchasing the page protectors and any of the supplies that you might need to go along with that, the extenders, um, any of the um, things that, that help to make your album complete. Um, people like to scrapbook in different ways. And what I mean by that is some people put page protectors in their book and then fill up the pages and other people put the uh, album together once they have all their pages all done. And so if you know that you're one that's probably going to have things grow, uh, then you probably want to get extra supplies for your albums when the, the company has them in case they change the sizing or they discontinue them. And this company, Stampin' Up! put in the past had the extra uh, extenders um, to or spacers in their packaging for their page protectors. <clears throat> this is an EK Success album. I probably got it at Joann's and I bought the protectors at the same time. Um, I believe in that package there are some uh, of the spacers in there. It's important to make sure that you get the right sizes of the things that you're using. If you have a seven inch album, an eight inch album, whatever it is, make sure you're buying the right kinds. These are the spacers that came with my Close to My Heart albums. They're cardboard, and I think they usually come with three. And you need those every time you put in an extender. The extenders in the albums are half inch, but you can purchase additional ones. These are one inch extenders. Michael's and Joann's carries extenders for the EK Success and other albums. Um, so those are fairly readily available. And then uh, these are plastic spacers from Close to My Heart that uh, if you put extenders in your albums or if you have bulky pages in your albums, you really need to use this type of thing because it makes it so your pages can um, have enough space in there and they're not getting crushed and also that you uh, have enough uh, for all of the page protectors you want to put in. And you can fold them in half and use them as one unit or you can uh, they come apart pretty easily. It just sort of depends on what kind of scrapbooking you do. Which uh, kind of brings me to the next point about sizing uh, for your albums. In 12 by 12 albums, because the, they are heavy to begin with, um, you know, for when you put the page protectors in and your initial amount of pages, you can expand them um, even larger than this. This one happens to be one and a half inches at this point because it had a half inch uh, ex posts that were in there. And plus, I put in the additional one inch, and then I had the cardboard pieces, the plastic spacers, and a, a number of empty page protectors. And so this can get quite heavy and bulky. And I have started to load it with some digital layouts, but um, as I put in other bulkier ones, it will fill in those um, some of those spaces. There isn't a lot of gap in between the pages they uh, and once it fills up more there'll be even less and they will all the pages will lay flat um, but right now it's it's not really set up very well for that I I kind of tend to try to do as much as I possibly can once so I don't have to redo things um, and sometimes it works and sometimes I still have to redo it <clears throat> so this is comparing the post bound with the strap bound albums and one of the uh, things that people have said in the past is uh, that they like about one over the other is that they don't want to have a gap in between their pages. They want to have a two page layout and have it look as cohesive as possible. And um, it's so that's important to think about. And in Creative Memories, that was one of their selling points that theirs were uh, without a gap. And you can see there's a white space in there. Um, I'm assuming it was put together correctly since I didn't do it. 
it just looks a little more cohesive when you do have a two-page layout um, all kind of as one unit or you may not care at all it's totally personal preference and there's no right or wrong in scrapbooking about whether there's a gap or not a gap um, and what kind of album you use or you know it, it really doesn't matter it's all good you uh, decide what works for you and i hope that this has been um, as at least a little helpful for people who are beginning scrapbookers or who are interested in the different kinds of albums i'm showing here the posts there's three different posts in a post bound album Album, um, this size and the way that you assemble them is that you undo the screws there and you can use a screwdriver however I usually use my finger or if it's really tight I'll go get a butter knife and then you just take that out uh, you can put the extenders in put the cardboard pieces or the plastic pieces that you might have add your extra page protectors and then just put it all back together and, and reassemble it's very simple um, Anyway, if you have any questions or comments, please do uh, visit my blog at scrapandthread.blogspot.com. Take care. Have a great day.